In this lecture, I want to share with you a number of important insights to statistical thinking by exploring a small real data set. Let's look at this colorectal cancer diagnosis data set. It has a sample of 255 patients, out of which 111 were diagnosed with cancer indicated as one in this class variable and 144 patients were benign indicated as a zero in this class variable. Each patient has blood test results on four biomarkers AFP, CEA, CA125 and CA50. Uh, a biomarker typically measures the level of some substance in the blood or tissue, the change of which could be caused by or associated with certain medical conditions. Biomarkers can be measured from blood sample, therefore they can potentially help with diagnosis and treatment without a need of invasive procedure. Now we are interested to answer the following questions. How can we, from looking at the data set, tell if any of these four biomarkers can predict risk of cancer? And if so, can we tell which one of them is the most predictive? Further, how can we produce an estimate of risk of having cancer based on these biomarkers. I want you to spend some time exploring this rather small data set and see whether you have some simple intuitions to this uh, seemingly rather complex problem. Some of the things you can try are, for example, using filter to sort the patients with each variable. apply the filter function then you can sort them descendingly or ascendingly for each markers. Or you can do some simple scatter plots like these. For example, I produce a scatter plot between the class variable and each of those four biomarkers as these four scatter plots. Very quickly, in a scatter plot, a, a, a pair of numbers such as 0 and 3.27 is represented as a point in this 2D Cartesian system. Notice all these points in the four scatter plots are packed into two vertical lines because one of our variable, the y, the class variable, is a binary one. So one improvement we can make on the scatter plots is to plot AFP versus CA like these. And we can color code the cancerous cases, those indicated as one, as red, and color code those uh, benign cases as green. And one more improvement we can make is to zoom in into the area where most points are congregated by changing the axis ranges to produce the following two graphs. I want you to pause the video lecture at this point and explore this data set by yourself and give yourself sufficient amount of time to think about how to approach those uh, three questions we raised earlier. Okay, I hope you did spend some time exploring the data set. So the two intuitions that I 
have gathered from my class in the past about answering those three questions are the following. The first one is to separate cancers and benign groups and see if we can see any differences. The second intuition is if a higher level of a biomarker is linked to a higher risk of cancer, then we should see more cancerous cases within those patients with higher values. Let's uh, pursue these two intuitions and see how far they can get us in this lecture. Now, let's get a closer look at the first intuition. Separate cancerous and benign groups and see if we can see any differences. Of course, we mean by we mean the differences in the biomarkers. Further, if a biomarker is predictive, then the characteristics of the biomarkers between the two groups should be somewhat different. So that's the essence of our first intuition. But we need to ask ourselves, what do we mean by difference? Does it mean if there are more difference in a biomarker, then that biomarker would be predict more predictive? And if there's no difference, then it's not predictive. Further, how to measure the difference quantitatively in the biomarker between the two groups? The first thing that we'd like to cross your mind to try is to calculate some basic statistics, such as average or standard deviation for each group. So here I use pivot table to produce these results. Uh, quickly, a statistic such as average or standard deviation is a number that characterizes or describes a collection of numbers. Uh, so in this case, average describes where biomarker is centered for each group. And then the standard deviation is actually the average distance from each point to the center which measures how dispersed from center each point is distributed. So we see uh, the average in the two groups for the all four biomarkers are different from each other. Uh, for the AFP, CEA, and CA20, the cancerous group has a higher average in terms of their values whereas the CA125 is the opposite, where the benign groups has a higher average value. And for the standard deviation, similarly, the AFP, CEA, and CA20, those, four, those three have a higher standard deviation or higher dispersion within the cancerous group whereas the CA125 has a higher standard deviation for the benign groups. Now, can we simply use these differences in average between the two groups to measure the difference in each biomarker in our intuitions? Or does the difference in standard deviation provide a more meaningful way of measure the difference. We'll table these questions for now. Uh, as we can see, each descriptive st statistics lies average or standard deviation. It's only a snapshot of a variable, capturing limited information. So we'll next look at histogram, which is a much richer way of capturing overall picture of a variable. I will first show you the basic idea of histogram. Let's look at this scatter plot between AFP, the x-axis, and CA, the y-axis, that we produced earlier. We will only look at the AFP, the x-axis, for histogram. I changed the axis unit to the increment of 1.5 here. So I'll call each of these interval such as 0 to 1.5, 1.5 to 3, as a bin. So the first bin is 
from 0 to 1.5 the second bin is 1.5 to 3 and the last bin is 13.5 to 15 and uh, on both sides I also create two catch all bin the less than or equal to 0 1 on the left hand side and also greater than 15 on the right hand side so in this case we will have 12 bins here in total now I want to count within the first bin which is from 0 to 1.5 how many red dots are within that bin and how many green dots are within that bin again the red dots are the cancerous cases the green dots are the benign cases and similarly I would do so for every other 11 pins of course in this case there will be zero counts in the first the leftmost pin which is less than or equal to zero of course we don't need to do this manually we can use Excel add-in uh, and data analysis and histogram to, to do, do the work for us but we do need to specify number of bins we want and also the, the range where the bins is going to cover so I chose the range from 0 to 15 in this case for AFP because most points for AFP are concentrated in that area and 10 bins seems to be a good number given the number of points in this case so here are the numbers produced by Excel so if you do count them manually you will find there will be 12 sorry there will be 14 uh, cancerous patients falling into the bin of 0 to 1.5 there will be 23 green uh, dots green which are the benign patients falling into the first bin uh, so, so on and so forth for the other 11 bins so this is what histogram does so we call these counts a different bin frequency distribution because it captures where and how frequent data points are distributed along the possible value for a variable uh, compared to these raw counts an even more meaningful way of capturing the distribution is to convert them into percentage which is this, this which is defined as the count in each bin divided by the total counts shown in this formula in Excel so this number is calculated by 21 number of counts in the this bin divided by the total number for the cancerous cases similarly every other cell defined the similar way and we call this percentage distribution so the advantage of creating this t uh, percentage distribution is to remove the effect of different sizes of the two groups and make the result more comparable so I produce a bar chart on this percentage distribution for the two groups again the red is the cancerous patient the green ones are the benign patients one more way to capture distribution is called the cumulative percentage distribution which is really just adding up all the percentage number from the leftmost bin to the current bin shown in this uh, Excel formula again look at this again it's simply adding up all the percentages up to the current bin and we call that as the cumulative percentage for the current bin I produce a, a line chart to visualize these two uh, cumulative percentage distribution again the red being the cancerous group the green being the benign group 
So we can use Excel uh, data analysis, histogram, and some other basic Excel function to produce the same result for uh, all four biomarkers, which I produce and show here. So compare with a single statistic such as mean or standard deviation. Histogram shows a more global picture of how a variable behaves. So it seems uh, the intuitive notion of the difference between the two groups can be much better represented by the degree of overlapping between these two uh, distribution uh, shown in as a histogram. Also, uh, it seems the cumulative percentage is especially helpful for comparison because all these uh, graph they start from zero and will eventually go up to one cumulatively. So now the difference between uh, the biomarkers becomes how fast those two lines goes up in approaching to one. Now by looking at these uh, four cumulative distribution. Uh, it seems that this is CA. It seems the CA has the widest gap between these two distributions. Again, uh, if two distributions are identical, the cumulative distribution will simply overlap. So if you have followed and agreed with uh, the each step we have taken in this line of reasoning so far, then we can translate the notion of difference in our intuition into the degree of overlapping between these two cumulative distributions. So the, the wider it is, the more difference we can claim between the cancerous group and the benign groups. So visually, we can easily tell this, the CA has the widest gap between the two distribution, followed by the CA50. And it's hard to differentiate uh, these, the other two. So an uh, easy way to turn this visualization into some sort of quantification is to realize we are really look at the area between the two, the area sandwiched by the two distributions. So I can, I can come up with a, a way of calculating the distance between the two points here. So in this case, in Excel, I calculate the absolute di distance between the two lines at each bend, and then I add up all the distance. This is the number that I come up with. So this way we quantify the differences. So in this case the CEA has the largest difference between the two distribution followed by CA50 and both AFP and CA125 had some differences between the two distribution. So let's uh, conclude on the intuition one. So based on the methods, we somehow intuit, we can say CA is the most predictive, followed by CA50. The other two biomarkers have some difference. So maybe they are marginally predictive, but we are not really sure. So we'll now turn to intuition two to see if we can answer the question in a different or a better way.